Dual Sense Edge Rapid Fire and Advanced Settings. That's what you've been waiting for. Before we get into the specific game settings, there are three things you must learn. So you can use these methods for any game. First, is it faster to use R2 with a range of 0 to 1 or 99 to 100? Second, is R1 faster than R2? And in which case you must use R1? And third, how does rapid fire work exactly? There are two popular ways to hold your controller. The first one is this one, having index fingers placed on top of all R1, R2, L1 and L2. The second one is using your middle fingers for L2 and R2 and index always on L1 and R1. Which one is better? After trying both for over 2 years, I found it easier to control the camera and right stick when I have my middle fingers on the back. I play Overwatch 2 with the first method using all 4 fingers and there is a good reason for that. Overwatch 2 has a strong aim assist. It might be different for you. Try and see which one makes it easier for better camera control. What does it mean? When you use the same finger for both buttons, it takes a little more time to switch and shoot. But it is worth it for better camera control in my opinion. Now either way, in most cases, the games allow a second shot only when the input is back to 0. Even if you have a dead zone from 0 to 1, if you go to 2 and go back to 1, it still won't shoot a second round, unless you go back to 0. Putting it in the test, you would realize that it's faster to have it on 0 to 1 if your finger is going to be taken off the R1 and try R2. Because every time you try to push R2, it's back on its 0 location. If you have it on 99 to 100, your finger might must travel a distance to reach 99 which is your input 0. Even if you are using zone 3, the start would be faster. But looking at it in a real life situation, considering that you must go back up to get to input 0 while holding your controller like this or this, it makes it harder to achieve a faster shooting after the first shot. So here are the pros and cons between 0 to 1 and 99 to 100. From 0 to 1 makes it faster for the first shot, definitely recommended for snipers and weapons that have a long reload time. From 99 to 100 makes it slower for the first shot, but then you can spam the last part of R2 very fast all the time. Meaning as it touches the 100% part, you don't need to think when to go back to 0 as if it was on 0 to 1. When it's on 0 to 1, you may go to 50 and then go back because you didn't know when it is actually at 1. So 99 to 100 is much faster than 0 to 1 after the first shot is done rapidly fast in most cases. But if you play with the slow weapons that have timing to shoot the next round, 0 to 1 could be fine and for sniper 0 to 1 is recommended. Consider turning off any weapon threshold or haptic feedback in the games, not the console by the way, as they add realistic dead zone which causes more time to start shooting. You can find that in the game controller settings. Some games like Overwatch don't have that issue even if the haptic feedback is on. But is it faster to use R2 from 99 to 100? or R1. From my experience, using R2 from 99 to 100 with the zone limiter to zone 3 is faster than R1, as the pressure can be done much faster. Is it faster to use R1 for sniping or R2 from 0 to 1? In that case, I would recommend using the one that goes easier for you, as if there are no rapid fire configurations and the weapon won't shoot until the reload time is finished, there is no point in doing it. As general profiles, I have two for rapid fire with R2. One that is limiting the R2 from 99 to 100, which I call 99 to 100. The second profile is only for sniping, which is from 0 to 1 and I call that sniper 0. As I'm used to using R2 for shooting, I'd prefer not to play with R1 currently. So how does rapid fire work exactly? Rapid fire depends on at least 3 factors. The weapon you are using, the game's physics and limitations, the input delay of the game and the server. Some games like Overwatch 2 will shoot at the same speed regardless of holding R2 or pressing it rapidly, making it fair for all players. However, that one has a bug too which I showed you in the last video. But some other games are not limited to time and speed, so you can go as fast as your finger goes. The input delay of the controller and the servers also affect how your game works. Ensure to have the lowest possible ping and use your DualSense Edge with a 
cable to PS5. For the people who are wondering if Bluetooth is faster, as I tested in most games, Bluetooth on PS5 has less priority than USB for the controller. I mean the idle delay. Even on PC when I use Edge with Bluetooth, the idle delay is around 1.5 milliseconds on average, but with the USB cable is around 0.5 milliseconds. That's idle, not in-game delay. As far as my experience goes, USB is much faster on PS5. To ensure you are using USB, go to the controller settings, general section, and select use USB cable, and look for this sign which makes you sure that it's using USB. Some people ask, does it help if I turn off Bluetooth on the console for a lower delay? As far as my idle delay test goes, it doesn't matter, but I have to test it in game too, and we'll share the results with you in the next video. As none of us are cheaters, I hope this video is not about cheating. There is a way to have automatic scripts, macro, and more running through your PC with Edge and DS4 or DSX application and apply them while playing on PS5 if you use remote play. You can even script it to do rapid fire with holding the button or making specific profiles for each weapon to terminate the recoil. But that is useless. Why? Because the remote play adds a huge input lag to your controller input. Thanks Sony. At least no one can cheat with Edge in online games using remote play. Here I want to show you how to get faster shooting for different games plus how to control the recoil easier. If you want to be an absolute cheater, DualSense Edge isn't going to help you much other than offline games. The games I'm going to cover in this part of the video are Call of Duty Warzone 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Rainbow Six Siege. There are more games that you asked for in the last video that I will cover in the part 3 of this video with new experiments that I'm going to do after this one. But the recoil control is a bit more experimental depending on each weapon and the game, starting with Call of Duty Warzone 2 and Modern Warfare 2. They use the same system and here are my preferred settings. I want you to turn off HDCP in the PS5 settings. From the audio test I've made in the game, I noticed that HTCP added a 2 milliseconds delay to 120 FPS mode and around 4.5 milliseconds render delay to 60 FPS mode. Either way, you'll be better off without it. By the way, if you want to use apps on your console, HTCP must be enabled. In the game graphics settings, I'd recommend using 120Hz output if your TV or monitor supports that for the least controller input lag. Also don't forget to use the controller with the USB cable. There are too many classes and weapons in Call of Duty. In this video, I'll give you two types of settings. But if you want me to cover each type of the weapon in a dedicated video because it will be too long, let me know in the comments section. The first one is for rapid classes, where you need to push R2 rapidly. I set the R2 input range from 99 to 100. As I told you, it's slower at the start but faster after the first shot. For stick sensitivity, I found quick curve plus 1 or plus 2 a good value with dynamic curve in the game which has a curve like this. Due to combining reversed curve and quick curve, you will have a faster response at the start which makes it easy to control any recoil with a little push. I also use instant ADS transition to have more control over the first part of the curve. And by using a lower ADS mode player I can get a slower speed when aiming which gives me more control over the aim while having higher speeds for my stick sensitivity. These are just my preferred settings. Experiment and find what works the best for you. For the rest of the game settings I use this input dead zones as my controller doesn't have any drift. But for L2 and R2 buttons if you play with the other holding method having all fingers on buttons you may need to increase L2 and R2 dead zone a little if you find yourself hitting it accidentally. I'm fine on 0.02. Ensure to turn off all trigger effects in the game to prevent any threshold which causes dead zone on different weapons and will ruin the whole point of this video. For the second profile, I'd use it for snipers and the weapons which has time to reload or shoot. By keeping the R2 input range from 0 to 1 and for curve, I used the dynamic on minus 1 as I left the game curve on dynamic and to eliminate that reversed S curve to get better control over long range sniping. And it seems to work for me. Give it a chance. For the left stick, if I'm being a long range sniper, I'd use digital from minus 2 to 0 depending on the range, as it helps you to get to the max of walking speed with a little push. If you don't like it, just use the default one. But with L3 on the back button, I feel like I have so much control over it. For back buttons, I usually prefer X and O, but for sniping, I'd use L3 and O as I find it better to control my movement and keep walking when I want to hold my breath. Oh. <sighs>
but the most important part is I'd use all these settings with R2 on the list zone, which is zone 3, to have the least travel distance. And in Call of Duty, I use my controller in position 1, having index fingers on all four top buttons. It's easier to control the aim for me this way. Now it's time to talk about Fortnite. There's one thing, I'm not a big fan of this game and I play it for less than 2 hours in my whole life. So the settings I provide here might not be good. First, turn off HTCP on the console and play on 120Hz if your screen supports it, with the controller connected by USB cable as it has less input lag this way. For the game controller settings in the dead zone section, I'd recommend decreasing it as much as your aim or character doesn't move automatically. For me, it's fine even on 5 and I can't go lower than that, so there is a little dead zone anyways which isn't much from my tests. If you enable adaptive triggers, it will enable weapon threshold which adds dead zone on R2 as well. Ensure to keep it off if you want rapid shooting even for pistols. For the rapid fire, I'd recommend R2 from 99 to 100 with the physical limiter on zone 3. This worked the best in my test. As I'm not a Fortnite player, I can't recommend any settings for the back buttons, neither cares. I leave those settings to you for now. If you want me to test this game as it takes a lot of time and effort, let me know in the comments and if it gets a lot of likes, I will make a dedicated edge settings for Fortnite. Apex Legends How to get rapid fire in this game It's the most different game I've ever tested. In general, using R2 from 99 to 100 with zone 3 works fine for a rapid shot with most weapons. But there are a few settings I want you to change. Set L2 and R2 dead zone to none. The default is too much, and if it bothers you, you can always add dead zone from controller settings, which you already have by having on 99 to 100, so no need to have more. Set a look dead zone to none, as it has too much dead zone for your analog stick. That's for rapid fire, yet for snipers and weapons that have a reload time and can't shoot rapidly regardless of how fast you go, again I recommend a 0 to 1 profile for the fastest response once you try to shoot. However, for some weapons like this one, I'd still recommend 99 to 100. Again, this isn't a game that I played before, so currently no recommended settings for aim cares or the game controls. If there are many requests in the comments, I do it in the part 3 by testing the whole game. As far as I've seen in the advanced settings, there is a lot you can do, more than any other game. But I'm not sure how many people would want me to spend so many days and time on it. Because for example, these settings don't show me the curve and I must find out myself. Last but not least for this video, Rainbow Six Siege Rapid Fire Mode. The first important thing in Rainbow Six is to disable VSync if you want the least controller input delay. As we tested it in the past with Edge over Bluetooth, the delay is much higher when the VSync is enabled. In such game, I would highly recommend that with prioritizing performance mode. Changing field of view affects FPS and I'd prefer something from 60 to 70. If the screen tearing bothers you with VSync off, you might be better to use it. But you will have a bit more delay. The next option that may wonder you is trigger effect. As I did test it, it adds dead zone or known as weapon threshold. Turn it off to get instant response for faster shooting. I did also decrease stick dead zones to the least value and I didn't have any drifting. I didn't find any options for R2 and L2 dead zone and there is a little dead zone for R2 which can't be fixed. However, playing on zone 3 would make it less. But I still recommend using 99 to 100 for the fastest rapid fire. This game is more about timing and accuracy rather than rapid fire, so in some cases you may find 0 to 1 better if your weapon is going to kill the enemy with one headshot, or if you are using an automatic, semi-automatic or snipers. As I'm not familiar with this game and only tested the reaction of the shooting system for rapid fire, I leave the curve and sensitivity settings to you. And just like other games I mentioned above, if you want to see a dedicated video for age with all settings which are a lot here and need a lot of testing, let me know in the comments section. As soon as I make part 3 for this video, I'll put it here as end screen. But for now, you can join our Discord server for the latest patches and updates. Thank you so much for watching.